Today I'm going to share with you five easy macro ideas you must try. For the best basic macro photography ideas, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Thursday. Hi, my name is Janice Sullivan and I am the founder of the Creative Mentorship Program. This is where we help macro, landscape and nature photographers make world-class photography fast because they're not doing it alone. The setup for water and oil is the same. Basically use a glass on top of a some sawhorses or if you have a glass table, that would work perfect too. So you can light underneath the water and oil. Just grab oil or soap and apply it on top of the water. Now this is the easiest way to have some fun making some beautiful images. Move things around, move your light around, and look for patterns. Okay, let me show you the second setup, which is super easy. What you'll do is grab a plastic or anything that can let the light come through it because light is really the key when you're playing with soap and oil. And then you'll just place oil drops or soap in the water, which is a lot of fun. Make sure that your lens is directly over and level to the water and oil or soap so you can get most of it in focus. You get a lot of dimension with oil, whereas soap is just like the bubbles, which is still a lot of fun. Grab paper or a blanket anything that you can think of that may be fun to put under the water and soap. All right, we're gonna start with my favorite macro subject to shoot, which is flowers. Flowers are so much fun because you can smell them, they're beautiful, and it's exciting to photograph a flower. Now, if you must go outside, then I suggest that you start off with your subject being in the shade because sun can be so harsh and the wind could be harsh unless you're backlighting them. When you're outdoors, obviously you have a lot going on when it comes to composition. So I would get really close to the flower and really think about the flower's details within the petal or what's inside it instead of the whole flower at first. I've also done this quick video right here on photographing flowers with your phone. So if you're interested, I show you tips on photographing with your phone and some post-processing too. So check that video out here. I believe that to be really successful and make it easy for you to photograph flowers is to bring them indoors, whether you're cutting them from your garden or going to your local florist or grocery store, that's where I go, to grab flowers. Look for flowers that are flat at first so you can grab most of the details in focus. Unless you're looking for a dreamy effect, then no worries, you can grab any flower that you want. If you purchase velvet from a local fabric store, that'll be perfect because black absorbs light, so you won't have to worry so much about the glare and light bouncing all over your flower. You can focus right on the flower. What I like to do when I'm macro shooting is, if I'm getting up real close, I'll use a rail. And I like my platypod. This is really nice because I can move it back and forth to get the composition that I want. 
I like this tint. It kind of softens things up when it comes to flowers. Now, if you rather not have the soft feel to the flower, then just then don't use a tent and side light your flowers. One last thing that I think you would enjoy is definitely adding water drops to your flowers. It's a lot of fun to spray water on those petals and it gives it another dimension to the actual composition. It's a lot of fun, try it out. Number three is the yummy part of macro photography. This is such an easy subject to photograph because I'm going to share with you how to photograph these fun fruits and veggies. What we're going to do is we're going to slice up the fruits very thin because a lot of fruits like oranges, lemons, kiwis, they have such great texture and they're translucent so you can see through them. And this video over here shares with you details on how to get a beautiful fruit photograph with backlighting. But with that said, you don't have to backlight the fruits. That's just a fun way and an easy way to photograph. But what I want to share with you is thinking about the texture like this broccoli is so amazing and then in post-processing i just put it in black and white so you could feel the textures even more so go into your refrigerator or your pantry wherever and start thinking and looking at the textures of your fruits and vegetables do they have a story do they look interesting go for it it is an easy subject to photograph for macro photographers. I do want to express that if you're indoors and you don't have enough light, you might want to bring a lamp or use a flashlight to help you. I would recommend a tripod. This way you have fun. You just start experimenting with different compositions with your fruit and veggies. Okay, so number four is leaves. I can see why people would be frustrated with leaves if they are not flat. So this is my suggestion to you. If you want to photograph the complete leaf, one leaf, then I would grab leaves that you see while you're walking or a leaf from the store and then put it in between some books or something heavy so it's nice and flat. That's what makes it easy to photograph. When you have a leaf and it has a lot of dimension, sometimes they curve in and out, you won't be able to get everything in focus and then that could be complicated if you want the whole leaf in focus. But my main point to leaves and the reason why I brought that into the top five macro photography ideas to shoot is because leaves are absolutely wonderful to photograph when they're backlit. If you're outdoors, go in the middle of the day and go behind the leaf when the sun is shining through it and wow you'll just be so amazed on the beautiful texture and the feel of the leaf or leaves what i actually do is go to my florist or my local grocery store and grab some beautiful leaves there and then bring them in and really look at the lines and the textures grab a tripod and set your timer on your camera for at least three seconds if you do not have a shutter release. So this way you'll get a nice, beautiful, sharp image of the leaf. I mean, don't you get excited when you see a beautiful leaf? I know I do. Let me know down in the comments if you ever photograph something very easy when it comes to macro photography. Okay, now we're on number five. It is the best 
idea for you macro photographers. I absolutely love it. Probably because one of the things that I do is mentor for creativity. That's why I have the creative mentorship, the creative method. I can't say enough how good it feels to create and this one right here is just for you. And we're talking about abstract photography. Yes, abstract photography. Let me read in Wikipedia. It is like perfect. Involve the use of color, light, shadow, texture, shape, and or form to convey a feeling, sensation, or impression. So it is something that you would do within yourself to make what excites you you could take that macro lens and make something totally the way you feel and want within your photograph here are some of my favorite abstracts to give you ideas on having some fun with your macro photography Now that you have these five easy ideas, let's make life even easier for you by downloading my ultimate and yes, essential macro photography toolkit to get your hands on my top macro photography creation resources to make your next image spectacular. So you can create work faster without the guesswork. The link is down below. If you also like to be part of our private Facebook group, where I jump on live on Tuesdays to answer questions on macro photographing, lighting, post-processing equipment, and selling your work, the link is down below. To grab even more basic macro photography ideas, check out the playlist down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. And always remember that your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers.